Hi guys, welcome back to Gunson Video, where today we're looking at the Scream Factory 95 to 2002 collection of Halloween films. I don't know why they've released them as like a three pack because the original five they came separately but yeah at the, at the time of recording you can only get this in the three pack I'm sure they probably will release them separately later as always guys I'll never ask you to like or subscribe to me can if you want not I won't ask yeah so getting back onto this so this is going to be like a bit of a casual one this isn't going to be all in depth Let's just do a quick unboxing. So here it comes in this really flimsy, shitty box. Uh, came to me quite damaged, as you can see on the corners. So here's the first one. So this has two 4K discs and two Blu-rays in it. So the cover's reversible and I've put the original cover on. So like I said, this came with two 4K discs and two Blu-ray discs. That's the theatrical cut, the producer's cut, and then obviously the Blu-ray is the same. Theatrical and producers. Halloween H20, 20 years later. Reversible cover with the original art. Just noticed, look how wonky that 4K thing is. Now oh well, don't care. And finally, Halloween Resurrection. By the way, I actually really fucking hate all this new artwork. It's all pretty much the same across all eight films. I really don't like it. But luckily they give us the original artwork on the reverse. With Jamie Lee Curtis from H20, not from this film. Weird. So first, we'll start with Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. Not a great film at all. It turns out, by the way, that I'd never actually seen all any of these three in full before watching them this time. I don't know why. I'm glad, because I got to experience for the first time in 4K. But I digress. Anyway, so I didn't. I thought after five, nothing could get much worse. But it's on par for me. I really didn't like five, but yeah, um, 4K really good in this. There's times where it's it looks a bit digital at times on like Paul Rudd's face, but that's only minor. Um, the film's very dark, like as in shadows and black, like hiding in. That's very good and very black. Like there's no problem over there. Um, all three of these are DTS Master Audio five point one by the way, where the first five, which came out last year, I think last year, they were all Atmos. Even though the back of three only says 2.0, if you go on the menu, it does say Atmos. Um, yeah, so it's fine. The audio is fine. It's mostly, the surround's mostly used for music. It's fine. I watched the producer's cut because I was told that was much more coherent than the theatrical cut, and that means the theatrical cut must be shite because this wasn't the most coherent film I've ever seen either. Um... But it's fine, Paul Rudd's good in it, obviously Paul Rudd's always good. But yeah, nothing to write home about. Don't really want to watch it again, but I own it so I might as well. But not for at least a couple of years. So now on to Halloween H20. H I don't think it's H2, -er. that makes no sense. I think it's H20, because it's 20 years later from the original. So this must have come out in 1998, I believe. Yep, yeah, 98. Um, yeah, so I was really looking forward to this one. Because it's got quite good ratings and people have always said it's kind of the best sequel after Halloween 2. Well, well some people do prefer it, but I didn't care for it. I really didn't. Didn't think any of the decisions people made made sense, whatever. Yeah, well, for me. Could happily watch it again, though. Definitely a lot better than 5 and 6. But yeah, it's all right. I'd say out of the three in this set, this is probably the weakest looking one. Um, I find the skin tones run a bit hot and 
Jeremy Lee Curtis's boyfriend, I can't remember his name because I didn't care that much. I think it was him anyway. Looked like he had a serious tan, which I don't think he does. But other than that, it looks good. Fine details, film grain, etc, etc. All look good. Um, sound, sound again. Front heavy, with the surrounds being used kind of mostly for music. There's a couple of very bass heavy moments, so the uh, sub response is good. But... Not my sub response is good. The sub level is good in this, but yeah, nothing to write home about. And finally, Halloween Resurrection from 2002. 2002. Um, widely regarded as the worst film in the Halloween series. By the way, when I say Halloween series, I mean up until this point. Um, oh, I quite liked it. I genuinely thought it was better than the last three films, at least. I know I'm definitely either in the minority or at least the only person to think it's better than the last three. Um, yeah, so with this one, it looks great. It's probably the best looking at the three as well. That could be to do with the time. It's 2002, not 95, so it's a seven year difference. And in that time, things moved on quite quickly. This was just before everything went digital. So it's 35mm, but it's like the best quality 35mm. And obviously, Less time to deteriorate as well. So, yet yeah, the 4K stuff looks great. There's two types of film used in this one. There's the 35mm and a lot of webcam footage because, a spoiler alert, obviously, it's um, got basically people wearing headsets for a live webcam. So this is just so one screenshot from each film. Under. Obviously, um, you're missing the HDR, it. but it's just giving you a so rough idea of the colour grading more than bad, anything. But obviously, at the time, the technology was bad for webcams, so it's still not great now sometimes but so that looks how it's supposed to everything else looks great the sound in this though i would have actually really liked an atmosphere track on this one the other two wouldn't have mattered as much but it's so atmospheric or like sounds going everywhere and whatnot i actually rewound it in the opening music bit because i thought what the fuck was that to my left so i had to rewind it to make sure that someone wasn't in my house i should have probably got up and checked but I didn't remind it, and it was still there at the same point. So. But yeah, it's the sound design, and this is great. Stories, obviously. And Buster Rhymes says his best to ruin it for me. Someone has told me that he wrote his own lines. I don't know if that's true or not, but it would make sense because he said the motherfucker a lot, and his lines are pretty shit. But yeah, get rid of him. And I think it's quite a solid film. Whatevs. Um, I'd say for the whole set, Quality wise, four and a half out of five. I think Atmos Track probably would have uh, bumped it up because they've done a great job Screen Factory or Shout Factory probably. to enjoy the films I'm going to go two out of five three out of five uh, three and a half out of five I ain't giving it any more than that because that's probably more than anyone's ever given it um yeah thanks for watching I know it's been a bit rambly and a bit shit but as I said it's just a relaxed one a uh, bit rates all around kind of like 80s to 90s so it's good thanks guys love ya